Everybody, welcome. Uh, obviously, you're not in the office. Doing a little bit uh, different stuff today. We've got uh, CJ Reichel. He is from Market Rebellion. He's one of the wonder kids over there, or wonder gentlemen over there. And he's going to help us out, especially me, to figure out exactly what technical analysis or TA is, to bring it down to the very basics. Because we all see these people on YouTube talk about these charts and these graphs and these numbers, and everything is very mysterious. So I brought CJ in to demystify some things and bring us in from the base level. So CJ, thanks for taking time to coming in and just uh, teaching me and everybody else, you know, just some basics of TA. Thank you, Rob. Great to be uh, on the channel. Really appreciate it. And yeah, um, if you guys like the technical analysis that you see today and you want to learn more about it, um, feel free to check us out at Market Rebellion dot com slash crypto we have a lot of courses specifically on trading and technical analysis uh, we also provide trade ideas on a weekly basis with entries exits and stop losses and before i get into the powerpoint i just want to let you guys know that nothing said today should be considered investment advice on the behalf of market rebellion um, this is all for just educational and informative purposes only um, but with that said why don't i share the powerpoints here and we'll get going. Great. And before we start, I will just say this. When I first got into crypto, it was, everything was TA. Everything was out there. And I was like, this doesn't make any sense to me. And I used to call it uh, uh, astrology because I'm like, I don't really believe in this whatsoever. However, since we've been doing this for a while, because it's, it's always been me and CJ and Alex doing uh, Trinity trading. Most of the stuff that CJ and Monty talk about do come to pass. So uh, these are the only guys I actually listen to, and that's pretty much it. So uh, let's see what, so teach, miss, teach us some things, CJ. Yeah, I want to start with just the basics to kind of get an understanding of what exactly is technical an analysis for the, for the person who is absolutely brand new. Great. Um, first thing I'll say is that in my own trading, I think technical analysis is only about half of the battle. I think, uh, at least when it comes to my own trading, I like to use fundamental analysis as well as uh, some others. But technical analysis and what we're going to talk about today is strictly charting opportunities. So anything that you look on at a chart is considered uh, technical analysis for the most part. Now, I was talking about this a little bit briefly, but there are four primary types of analysis when you're doing it. Um, you have fundamental, which is typically a company's financial statements um, in Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies uh, space. This could be considered on-chain volume or metrics like that. Uh, we have an industry comparison, uh, sector analysis, and then of course we have technical analysis, which is the study of historical prices and volumes. Now, what are some of the advantages of technical analysis? Some of them is that what you learn here today uh, will not only just be applicable to crypto, but it will also be a, a clip, uh, applicable to all asset classes, including stocks, uh, foreign exchange, uh, commodities, futures. Um, and it can be used in conjunction with fundamental analysis as well as some derivatives. Um, it allows for a proactive approach because when we use TA, we can project uh, potential outcomes and try to assign various probabilities to certain moves. Um, and it can be tailored to fit any investor's individual trading style and need. So for instance, if you're a swing trader and you like going by say the one day or the one week time frame, that TA is going to be tailored differently um, than somebody who say is just trading on a 15 minute time scale. Now the definition of technical analysis is also known as charting. And it is the study of an asset's price and volume and history over time to predict future prices. And with it, we combine statistical and graphical tools to improve the predictability of future prices. So we have the definition of TA. Now, let me give you guys a, a brief history. It was first created by Charles Dow, who was the first editor of the Wall Street Journal. And these ideas that we carry with us today are generally known as Dow theory. Now, how does Dow theory work? Well, it is essentially um, a strange of movements or a string of movements. We have uh, bulls and we have bears. Um, if you haven't heard that before, a bull market just refers to increasing prices while a bear market refu uh, refers to kind of decreasing prices. 
And within these bull and bearish moves, we have something like points E, which is a higher high. And so that makes sense, right? Because it's the highest of the highs. Um, and then we have you know, some lower trends and some downtrends, which then consist of higher lows or lower highs. But moving forward with that, as I kind of described, there are three primary conditions of markets. We have bull markets with increasing prices, bear markets, which consist of decreasing prices, and then ranging markets, which is basically when just prices move sideways. So this is when we get a series of higher highs and higher lows. That characterizes a bull trend. When we get a, so yes, and then this would be character, characteristic of a bull trend, right? Because we have a higher high here. Um, we then have a higher low because this low is higher than the previous low here. And when you have succinct higher highs and higher lows together, you create an uptrend and thus a bull market. And the exact same true, the exact same is true for the inverse in bear trends. So you're gonna be looking for lower highs and lower lows. And so these arrows point to lower highs. We have a high that is lower than our previous. And when that occurs uh, pretty consistently, it leads to downtrends and it creates overall bearish momentum and, and bearish markets overall. And then finally, we have ranging markets that stay in a particular range. So as you can see, um, this is where we, we also refer to this as kind of a neutral consolidation, but this is what characterizes a ranging market, a market in which uh, the bulls and the bears never really get dominance over each other and we're locked into this range. And just one thing that I'll say is that uh, when you're drawing these flat lines, the support and resistance levels in the future, it's always the closing prices that count. As you can see, we have some candle wicks coming off of these candle bodies here, um, but it's only the closing prices that count when it comes to support and resistance levels, as you can see there. Yeah. So hold on. So CJ, real quick question. I mean, all great stuff, right? So not to interrupt your train of thought, but uh, so closing prices for... for because CJ and Monty, CJ here, is mostly for the, the traditional side. There's actually like a closing uh, price because markets actually close in these areas. So when you hear this at home, if you watch this on YouTube or Dan teaches crypto, just know that uh, you know crypto doesn't really close ever uh, per se. But there is a closing price for crypto, right, CJ? Yeah, that's a great point too, Rob, because uh, typically at 6 p.m., central time, that's when the new candle will be created for Bitcoin on the daily chart. So that's considered a close. Um, although, you know, the market never does truly close, they're, they're traded 24 seven. So there are other types of technical analysis. And before jumping into those, I just want to cover uh, the, the kind of trinity here uh, of technical analysis. It consists of price indicators, um, I'll give you an example of some of those. It also consists of oscillators, which are more like indicators, but they are momentum based. And then we have price structure, which are things like volume and price action. So here's an example of some indicators. These include moving averages, support and resistance lines, uh, candlesticks, which we can get into as well. Going over some of the more popular oscillators, these consist of Bollinger Bands, the RSI, uh, the Keltner Channels, um, some things you may have heard me talk about on Trade the Chain before. And then finally, the price structure, which consists of on balance volume, um, you know, some take in money flow and the money flow index, as well as the others that you see there. Okay, thanks, CJ. It makes a lot of sense. I mean, that was just the basics, uh, the wording. Now let's get into where the rubber meets the road and we'll actually do some actual TA with some charts. So that'll be in the next video. So thanks for sticking with us. We'll see you in the next one.